Learn to build your e-commerce website in WordPress. For this workshop, it is intended for business owners, store managers, and content creators. After this workshop, you should be able to create a functioning website or e-commerce store. It's low code, no code. So don't worry if you don't have any experience at all in creating your website or e-commerce store. You can learn it on this workshop. If you are a Data Trends client, you can request additional workshop in the future uh, by email j at datatrendsco.com. The prerequisites in order to learn how to do WordPress website is generally for if you have basic aptitude of the internet. So if you know how to use all these platforms, Google, LinkedIn, YouTube, email, Vimeo, Twitter, uh, any kind of blogging, Facebook, any or all of these, you should be able to learn how to create website in WordPress. Materials needed to participate in this workshop or create a WordPress website. You need a computer that's connected to the internet and a web browser. It could be an Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, or Google Chrome. So any of these could work. And the most important thing is you need a web hosting and domain. So your domain is yourbusiness.com, shopyourbusiness.com, .net.org. That's the domain. It's basically the public address so that we can view your store or your company website. Hosting is the storage of your data for your website. It could also be a storage of your email, your codes, your photos, your videos, your backup. So that's what hosting is. If you're interested, you can go to datatrendsco.com for 15% uh, off. You can use datatrends at checkout, datatrends15 at checkout. Now we have two sessions. The first session covers introduction to WordPress, domain registration with hosting, tech support, configure your DNS, set up, manage, create your email, connect your email to devices. Session two is the deep dive of the basic creating your website in WordPress. So what is WordPress? WordPress is a service or um, a service or a platform that powers 42% of the web. So a lot of websites, whether they're small or big, can be built in WordPress. And these are examples of those websites. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this website. Why WordPress is because of these amazing capability. It's expandable, flexible, and affordable. It supports responsive development. That means you can develop website for phone, for tablet, for desktop. Scalable. You can obviously you can see sample of this website. It can be small website, it can be big one. You can have multi pages. This can be used. Search engine optimization friendly it can be you can add meta tags um, in your page so that it can be easily accessible and right on your algorithm and then it updates frequent features and security vulnerabilities so a uh, wordpress has does a lot of patches so that if we see any kind of issue with security we do updates we do updates all the time so sometimes it's bad because you have to monitor it otherwise maybe your website can become offline in some cases and then you have to be on top of it to make sure that the updates are correct and that you are not vulnerable in any type of attack it supports multi-site and multi-lingual functionality so if you have multiple stores location multiple country location if you have requirements for different languages there are plugins for it it's rest api and developer friendly so if you're a developer that wants to add other functionalities functionality from different 
uh, requirements, and different tools. It's user friendly because you don't really need to learn how to code to build a website in WordPress. As long as you know how to do basic editing or Word, you should be able to create WordPress. You do need some time to learn how to add things, how to put additional functionality. It takes a little bit of time, but you can learn it. Easy role with granular access. That just means that WordPress allows you to have levels of permission. So you can be an editor, publisher, um, administrator, and those granular access have different type of permission while accessing your data, your databases, your stores, etc. So that is WordPress for you. And now let's go ahead and move into our important things. This is what we're going to move ahead and learn now. The domain registration and web hosting. So if you go to store, click on web hosting, you can pick uh, basic freelancer is $7.95 per month, entrepreneur $29.95, basic e-commerce, etc. I am not saying that you have to purchase it from here, but uh, if you want our support and assistance in building your store for additional um, tutorial, uh, you have to be a client of Data Trends for us to be able to do that. If you guys decide that uh, this is too much work, you'd rather purchase a web design services, you can just buy uh, web design services from us directly. Uh, business website is 750. E-commerce is 1,995. And then, if you have a community portal like a school or uh, any type of uh, directory, it's 3,995. And then, if it's a grocery or business website like a restaurant, it's 4,995. So anyway, what you gotta do is first to get your domain go to say um, your store63.com and then just click search um, if it's available that's great and you click add so this domain is good for one year and then if you want to add you can set your name servers here or you can leave it the way it is and you can add hosting as well purchase one here use that and then click continue once you do that all you need to do is check out and fill in your information here and you will automatically receive a link to your domain and your uh, cPanel so your cPanel is essentially the back end of your web hosting. So it has all the details with regards to your email, to your backup, to your public and private files, and how to upload your files, your databases, your domain, how much bandwidth you're using, what type of metrics, how many visitors you have on your website, security and then your software any kind of advanced settings that you might need to maintain your website any type of preferences in terms of your styles and password security for your cpanel and then these two are the software installer installer for your website so um, we're not using SiteCAD because we'll use WordPress. So once you get familiarized yourself with this, you also, you also want to look at the right side, which would be information of your web hosting server. So this is your IP address, and these are the email accounts that you have available, your disk, your file, how much percentage you currently use, and your bandwidth capability okay so the next thing you are going to be doing is understanding about your email account so you have a domain like yourbusiness.com you want your domain to be connected to your email so that it's professional or corporate when they send you an email like sales at yourdomain.com 
in this case in this example I have three available email and two used obviously uh, if you are depending on the type of web hosting that you selected from our shop for example uh, there are free emails here uh, you can also purchase additional inboxes in case you decide to do that but anyway what we're going to be doing is create an email I have two domain here one is a subdomain and then one is the main domain I'm only going to create a new email for my main domain so I will say orders because this is a store so I'll say orders at shop gg.com and then I'm also going to use this password and then I will go ahead and click click uh, create so now I have three used email and one so to manage this email if you want to be able to access this via your devices what you need to do is first you want to manage it make that your storage are set up uh, properly your storage should have enough space for a certain amount of email so I would put normally unlimited or 2 gigs 5 gigs whatever works for you uh, depending on how much space you have in your domain right now with hosting then what's that's what you should determine here um, and then I'll just click update my email settings now if I want these to go to my device I'll go ahead and click check email and if you have um, an iPhone and Android or option 2 so for example if you have an iPhone Apple you just send these direction if you want your email calendar and contacts to sync on your iPhone just click in here this will give you a script sent over to your email and that script you can use to set up or configure your email your calendar and your contact I have um, instruction or I have a video of this that you guys can watch on our YouTube channel if you don't want this loaded into your smartphones you can just click around cube web browser this is your webmail link so you can send receive email from here let's move on to checking your SSL so SSL is important so that your site is secured and I want to verify that the 2021 shop GG has a domain control validation so this one is already validated now let's go ahead and start our session 2 which is to deep dive on the basic of WordPress our web hosting company has a pre-installed software called Softaculous. Softaculous is an auto installer that's already installed in our server. This helps us to process installation quickly because WordPress can be installed both in a server and locally like in a web hosting or locally. So the it's complicated to do a local installation and build your wordpress from your local pc and then transfer it into web hosting via ftp for this tutorial let's focus on installation of wordpress using softaculous Soft in our using softaculous um, once you get to this page all you need to do is click install and in here you have options to do quick installation or custom we'll just do the basic install it, installer and the first step here software setup would be where you specify which domain 
you will install your WordPress. I already have a shop at shopkeejo.com, so I'm going to install it in my subdomain, but in your case, you should install it in your primary domain. And then make sure that HTTPS, because especially if you're doing uh, payment merchant processing, it's required. And use the latest version of WordPress, unless your theme, if you already have a specific theme, doesn't is not compatible with this version. So in this right here we'll show your site settings these are initial settings you obviously can change this later so i'll just go ahead and do that so let run make the world the runway and then for my domain i would just add Username, you have to remember this because if you don't, then you'd have to go to PHP configuration and make the changes there. Don't give yourself a headache. Just make sure that you copy your username and password. And then the admin email, this is where all the notification of any changes on your website will be shown. Here, I would just leave it the way it is. And then if you have a backup folder, if you want to back it up, put it in here. And then I will select um, basic theme first. Uh, I'll just do this for now, just so we have some pages in our standard website. And once this is set up, so let's go ahead and review it again. So first set up, it needs to be HTTPS and the latest version of WordPress. And then put your site name and the description make sure you remember your admin account and then your advanced option here don't make any changes uh, select theme and then click install it'll take a few minutes and then once the installation is complete make sure that you copy this link because this link will give you access to both your website front end or what the public will see and then administrative url is where you can click to make uh, setups and uh, configuration and changes on your uh, wordpress website so if i click in here this is the template that we just installed and then if I click right here this would be the back end of our WordPress website so there isn't much in here right now because we haven't really done much this is just the frame of our website so let's get familiarized with what's in here for the time being um, everything is pretty self-explanatory there are a few setups that we have we have to go over so updates here includes the updates of your wordpress and any kind of theme and plugins that you already installed in your wordpress so that just tells you that the more uh, plugins and things you have installed the more maintenance you will do so the idea is that install only the plugins that you need install only the things that you want the things that you don't plan on using in the future just remove them or deactivate it post is this is ideal for a website that are like news or blog because this gets updated on a regular basis all you need to do is add new or categories or tags in the post so that it can be easily viewed in any web browser algorithm media here is where you upload all your videos and your photos i normally upload these as needed so because i normally add especially if you're new i would just upload the logo when i need it photos of the items when i need it for the pages, this 
sample page is what actually shows here remember that and that's what actually shows in here so I would name these as home for now and then most websites obviously have multiple pages isn't it in, it's not just home right so you want to add the pages that you want um, say services and then maybe add um, contact right like that and now now you have three pages but when you go here it actually wouldn't show you right away right the reason is because you have to create a menu in your appearance so that's managed through here and you have to create a main menu to show your pages and um, we'll create and we'll add these pages right here and we can arrange it according to how we want this and then save keep in mind that these pages are still blank there's no information here yet so this is just the frame of our website and then i need to go to my location and include it in the main menu So now you have the home page, you have services, and then you have contact. Up next is, and then in here, the most important here is permalink. If you are doing a static website, like a standard business website, a home page, about us, shop, contact, you want to do post name because this will carry over the title of the page. So it's going to be yourdomain.com forward slash title of the page. So if you've noticed here, this is the title of the page that I created. So this one here, I would probably go back to the page and then specify that my permalink shows home and then update that okay so now when i go here it shows my main home page and then if i go to services it shows services contact it shows contact okay up next is our appearances so appearances just shows the cost how to customize how to add themes customize your themes your widget your menus your background for the plugin these are one of the most powerful part of wordpress um, that's where you can find functionalities that you don't have to code you don't have to code yourself since you're not going to be a programmer so this is where you go for the users this is where you can create the granular type of um, role or permission you have all these options so somebody can be a subscriber contributor to your content you can be an author an editor or administrator so each one of these has different permission to access, to edit, to create things on your website. What we're going to be doing now is to create our e-commerce store. First is let's install the theme. So go to appearance, click themes, and this was the theme that we installed in our current website, as you can see. Yeah, it looks like that. Now, 
what we're going to do is install a new one. This here, upload theme, this is if you purchase the theme from somewhere else, like a specific type of design that you found, you can upload it directly here. Now, if you want to use the free version theme, uh, you can click on here and there's like 4172. There's also most popular, the latest, and then feature filter. If you're an e-commerce site, they also have that filter. So just pick the one that you like the most or the most relevant to your store. And then the feature that you want in your site, if you want full site editing, or just custom logo, custom background, if you have a specific grid layout, or if you want white blocks, four columns, three columns, whatever, you can filter the format of the template and then you can click apply filters before you do this make sure that you have some idea of the design that you like for your store although you can customize this but the most the more similar it is to the store that you like the better it is for you so we'll try to pick one for our workshop today Okay, let's say this one right here, the shop online with the red things right here. So for these, it shows you a little bit of information about what's included in it and what it's primary used for. So let's go ahead and install this and see how it goes with our store. And then let's activate it. And now it's in our themes so at this time the next option would be is to customize the store right so it shows your um, logo and everything so I would do that oh so there's a lot of um, information here that's separate from the basic tabs on your WordPress so this is based on the theme that you choose so some themes wouldn't have these functionality some themes would have it just basically depends on which theme that you're currently using so in this theme you can create uh, how many wedges do you want you can say like four and then we're not going to publish it for now. Um, do you want a counter? You know, so basically, things like it. Just go over so that you can do the basic customization without having to code uh, and add additional things in there. So, like, for example, you can put your address on top, uh, say Chicago. Here it shows Chicago. Paris. And then it can add your email orders at shop gg.com. And then your phone number. And hours, which is a and now you have that information included on your website. And then you can add your links, your social media links that's going to show up here. Yeah, so it's gonna show up here. And then fill out the rest of them and then oh and you can change the background color on top let's say if you change it to blue what it's going to look like right there change it to whatever colors you guys like yeah so that's basic customization you can do in this theme okay 
Okay, so anyway, moving on to it just um I suggest that when you find a theme that you like the most, just learn what each of these links and these functionalities can do for you. Let's move on to installing our WooCommerce. Because the theme is done uh your customizing this is based off how you guys want to create how your website how you want your website to look like so for this homepage display let's talk about this your latest post so if you have a blog type you want to do a latest post so that whatever is whatever's the latest um, article that you wrote it's going to show up first now if you have a business website or a store, you want to do a static page and you would have option which page you want to show first. For me, it's going to be a home page, obviously. And then if you have a blog on top of your having a static page, you can select the post page to be different. So you can say blog that my store in here. Okay. So let's go ahead and publish this and so we're going to exit in the theme for the time being and so the theme is under appearances and the menus the headers the background and theme editor will be under appearance for plugins this is most important in creating your online store so for the online store, you will need WooCommerce, over 5 million active installations, so it's pretty stable, lots of people are already using it. Let's go ahead and install WooCommerce first, click install. It will ask you to activate and voila it's gonna show on your left side remember earlier we just have these without these woocommerce this is after you install the woocommerce plugin so what you're going to be doing next is click settings and this is where you fill out information regarding your store the products the shipping payment the accounts and privacy, your email, any kind of integration, and any type of APIs that you're going to be using. And you really have to fill out this information. Otherwise, you won't be able to ship properly. You won't be able to calculate taxes, uh, payments, etc. So first is you want to fill out this form. and decide fill this out as much as you can selling location if you are targeting only a specific mm -hmm. country or continent you can fill it here i would say sell to all countries shipping location if you only want to ship you get the idea so ship to countries only say you want to ship only to united states uk japan australia and then default customer location so geolocate I really like the idea of doing this for now uh, you can they do it based on shop and then enable taxes so enable tax rates and calculation and calculate coupon discount sequentially so yeah so that includes um, explanation how the coupons are to be applied and 
what currency you're gonna be using, thousand and decimal, how many number of decimals, like 1250 would be two, if you want to do 1250, 65, it would be four. So then you just say these. After you save that information in your store address general, you're going to go to products. Oops, I didn't save that yet. Click here, save it. Next thing is the product. So this is information about your product where it's primarily showing we'll leave it unchecked placeholder of image this 15 is good you can do it bigger or smaller depending on how you need it weight unit or you can select the type of measurement so this one you can use uh, imperial or standard depending on which country your buyer are most likely coming from so if you're in the usa it would be if you are in Europe or Philippines, for example, use kilogram. Like Asia, use kilogram. And then for reviews, do you want to uh, allow them to review? And then, yeah. And then click changes, save changes here. The next is setting up your taxes. So there are two ways that you do this. I guess it depends on the country that you are. You can do ship taxes, uh, post the price of your product that includes already your taxes or it exclude your taxes. Whether the taxes is based calculation on the shipping address where the product goes to or the billing where the product was recorded to be purchased using the billing or the shop based and i think it's based on the law of your country how your taxes are calculated so you you specify it here and then for that's the thing i can't really explain this to you guys you just pick whatever you think works for your store so whether you're at zero rate reduce rate i think like if you're a wholesaler with exemption you do zero rate and then if you are doing just basic uh, shipping rate then you speak here based off whether or not um, you're charging taxes based on shipping if you're adding taxes to certain class of shipping type and then display the shop that includes taxes or exclude taxes so, so if you have a hundred dollars per item if you include the taxes it will calculate based off your specifications here uh, during checkout and then i would say include the taxes display price during cart and checkout i would do this just for full disclosure to the client and then price display suffix no i'm not going to do that and display to tax totals so itemized it. um yeah i think i'm going to do a single total so total of your item plus the taxes that's how it's going to show up and then i'll just click save changes here and right here are ways that you can insert or create your tax settings so the standard rate for taxes will be here i would actually suggest it best to speak with your accountant how you will charge your taxes and for which location of shipping whether it's for store whether it's for or billing address of your client and how much those taxes would be um, there is a way where you can automate the setup of your taxes you can insert the country code which country the state code post zip uh, rate 
tax name, priority, and function name, etc. Um, but if you have it already, you can import those rates right here. And now let's move on to shipping. So in terms of shipping options, what we have here are three um, tabs. So for the first tab, this is adding your shipping zone, basically where your products goes to, and how much do you charge for those. The shipping option here is how you are going to calculate the cost of shipping, where it's going to show up, and whether it's by customer shipping address, the billing, or the, for shipping to the customer's billing, billing address. That's just the setup for shipping. And then the shipping classes are just the type of um, brackets that you have, how much you would charge per category, per weight, or dimension. So right now I added two and then you could name it differently like if it's um, maybe you can say like documents if it's parcel um, so you can do that and then when you're creating your zone you want to go back here and say you're shipping to USA you want to do USA shipping you can also do continents but I'll do this United States all state I'll add a shipping flat rate of um, now these are the shipping classes that we created the first one was parcel if it's medium weight, lightweight, or documents. So for documents, it's just gonna be one. Um, for documents, I'll put 99, uh, actually 199. Or any kind of light thing, it's gonna be 199. If it's medium, we'll add $10. This is 2.1 to five kilogram and then for parcel we'll add like two dollars so the shipping would be $3.99 so then we'll save that and then if you want to do free shipping you can add shipping method and then specify if um, there is a coupon if they have to order a minimum amount, a uh, minimum amount order amount or a coupon, a minimum order amount and a coupon. So, um, so apply the amount first. Apply it to the original amount before you use the coupon this time. Okay. So that's that, and then like. You can add on as many zone as you can so we've set up the north america now we can set up like asia asia zone anywhere in asia and you can and then so we're going to test these when you go to your shipping for the website the flat rate is 199 and then if you because this product is set up that it's lightweight so you can go over to your products and then you can click here you can look at the shipping and specify if you want it to be a documents only lightweight medium or parcel so for medium there's additional ten dollars so when you update this 
and you go back here and I will go back and re-add the item and choose large up yeah large and then I'll check out now it shows that it's eleven ninety nine because I set up the shipping to be medium. So our shipping is set up. That's good to go. The next thing is our payments. There are different options that you can do here. You have the check payment. You have a PayPal integration. So for direct payment, you just click there. Check payment, you just click there. Cash and delivery, click here. And then you click the setup. And that should enable you to fill in the information needed to set up your uh, bank transfer. Okay. And, but most of the time, we actually use, um, we don't kind of use this. So we use the other type of payment options, which would be, uh, Woo Commerce Payment that accept credit card payment. Um, Stripe also accept credit card payment, but it requires verification and then PayPal. So let's start with Stripe payments because that's the one that I have. And in here, you can say enable Stripe and then accept Stripe payment. And then test publish key, um, capture charge immediately. I would definitely do that. Statement descriptor. This is where the name of your shop should show up, should shop GG. So the client would know that this charge was from your store. And then if you want to enable them saving the card to your store, so when you buy again, it's there. And then We're not going to enable test mode. And this live key and live secret key is available in your um, Stripe API. Secret key. Client secret. So if you go here, you have to have a current stripe to get your apis i will not go over how this is set up but at least you know where to go with that i can definitely help you guys if you have any issues with this how to connect these um, i find it very easy to set up but uh, i will not go over that because we only have one and a half hours so you log in into your APIs for Stripe and then you copy that information right here and then you save it here, right there. And then if you prefer to do the payments for hmm, there are also um, PayPal, so you can go to PayPal. You click on to your PayPal account and connect it here. Put your username, your password, and then save. Okay. And there's also an option here to do credit card processing. You will need to complete your onboarding. Obviously, you have to fill in your username and password for your PayPal to do this. The other thing is also uh, WooCommerce credit card payment system, which is where did you go? Um, right here. So you can also click here 
and then it will take you to an option to set up your WooCommerce payment. So click here. And then you set up your own. You just follow the instruction that we have here. Next is the account and privacy. So these are all self-explanatory. So whatever you guys need to include here, including the registration, privacy, what will you use their information to register in your site, their checkout privacy with their data, uh, credit card information, how are you planning on using those information? Standard stuff. And then um, pick however you guys want the guests to check out, how they create the accounts, etc. And how they remove the data after a certain period of time. And then you click save changes. And for the email, this one is for notification when there's order in your site. So, where do you want the new orders to go, the canceled order, the failed order, anything on hold, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just specify. It's already kind of set up, but if you want to do changes or manage it differently, then you're going to click here, for example, in the new order. What do you want to get notified? Um, you can put additional person here if you want two people to get notified of the orders or you and your assistant salesperson can get notified and then click save up next is your integration so there are different type of integration that you can do it depends on the plugins that you have used um, I wouldn't worry too much about this until you need it for now we are going to just leave it we are going to just leave it for the advanced this is where all these extra features if you want to be extra with your website so for now there are defaults and defaults works just fine unless you want to get creative then you obviously will have some setups to do rest apis is good for if there are certain access that one company need on your wordpress this example could include um, if you want to sell customized product and there is an API so that when someone order they can customize their t-shirts or whatever this also include any developers API from uh, Google if you want to open a Google store to verify certain functionality of Google store to connect with your WooCommerce that's where it's going to be put up um, for your specific needs and you need additional information about these or additional tutorial just send me an email and i can probably um play, create a video for that so you guys can help i can help you to set up your store properly so there are different types so you have good books um, legacy apis from different companies etc there's additional features that you need added in there. It's all in the advanced section. And there are also suggestions like what other things you can install with WooCommerce. So like wishlist, uh, any additional functionality within e-commerce, you can install it here. For multi-currency, this is very useful if you want to sell to other countries alongside your um, main location so if you are going to sell you just click get enabled and then but you need to set up your uh, WooCommerce payment system to do this 
Uh, we're not going to do that right now because I don't want to set up a payment system, but just follow through the instruction from WooCommerce for this. Okay. Once your store, uh, your product is set up, you have to do tests on the payments. After setting up your store, the general uh, WooCommerce is to do all these add the product and look at your analytics and your marketing. So that 2021 that from Chichi is there and now we have um, we have all these but we don't have product yet right so what we're going to be doing now is to add products and before adding product there are other things you have to do the first is adding categories of your item so let's just go ahead and go to home. the so this would be your category so for clothing and then this would be your examples of subcategories under clothing for jewelry and accessories this would be subcategories under that and, and so on so forth so what you need to do create your categories and subcategories so if we are doing clothing store let's just go ahead and put gowns and this is a main category so it's not under parent and then let's click here you can add an image too so it, it shows like a preview of your products and then uh, another category is clothing, like any other clothing besides gown. Another category would be bathing suit, swimwear, I'll just call it swimwear. Now, remember that when we were looking at his, this is the main category, but we also have category. So, for this store, I want to do categories of gowns. I'll say gown for gala. I'll put it under gowns. So, so this is a gala is subcategory of gown. Another one is from. And then I'll put it under gown category. Add. Another one is pageant gowns. And then I'll add under carrot. So if you see here, this is the main category and this is the subdomain. The same thing with other ones like one piece, under swimwear. And then two keys under swing. Okay. Um, I'll just complete this just for fun. So for clothing, we put dress under clothing. Okay. All right. So now we have all these categories and next is attributes so the attributes would be in clothing you would say style like long sleeve short sleeves sleeveless tube uh, sizes like size would be one type of attribute color would be another type of attribute Uh, sleeve style length okay. I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> Again, so that goes so the, I have three attributes you can add as many attributes as you want just depends on how uh, you can um, 
add is as much but after you're adding the main attributes you have to go and click configure so that you can create the options for your store so for colors I want to do black So in, in other words, the categories, the attributes are just the options that you're giving your customers when they purchase your product. So you give them choices for depending on inventory that you have. Where is it? Configure it to excess for extra small. S for small, medium, large, and then it's there. So you can also, of course, complete this like the length, long, short, medium. Work. Now we're ready to add a product. So what you're going to do is click Add New. When you click add new, it actually tells you to put the title of your, the name of your product. So usually this would be a description, like a regular name, that's standard name of your product. And then you want to add a description, which should show here. And then, yeah, and then I will put this in category clothing and dress. Okay. And then these would be your tags. So you can literally be as creative as you want here. So you can say Audra. So you can put as many tags as you like, which is nice because the more tags you put in here, the easier for people to look for it. And then you want to add a product image. This image will be the first that people will see when you um, first add your when you you the first see your page. So that would be the photo. And then the gallery would be the additional photo of the same item. So if you have multiple colors, it can be shown here. If you have multiple styles, the front, the back, the side view, it's going to be in your gallery. Okay, I'm not adding more photos because I only have one. And then the most important part of this is really the selection of how you're going to display your item. So for this product type, you can select to do simple product listing, group product listing, external affiliate product listing, or variable product listing. So for simple product, this is if you have an item that doesn't have options. Say you're selling a, say for example, it's a book. You only have one option for that book there's no number of pages it's just one unique item and then you can list it as a simple product you add regular price and then configure the rest and then you're good to go for a group product this is essentially product that has uh, relevancy with each other like if you're selling pants and then there's a top that goes along with it or a hat that goes along with it you can put this in one group listing the next one is external affiliate products so 
for external affiliate this is for if you are an affiliate and they give you a link so that a buyer can click the link and it takes them to a different website that will process the payment that will accept the payment that will set up the client information etc so this is uh, for those influencers um, if you are a partner product for Microsoft and you have a link where buyer can just click and then once they click in there and purchase you get a commission for that this is the option for you and you fill out as much as you can here um, and then the most relevant one especially for clothing shoes makeup skincare product is variable product because this variable product will create sets of different um, item options so let's go ahead and start with these so for the variable product for this dress that i'm about to post i'm doing variable product and i'm only tax uh, it's taxable item and then you can select whether it's a zero rate reduced rate or standard and then if i have an, a specific sq for this item how much which shipping it would cost them to do this shipping class whether it's usps priority or next day air um the shipping class can be also whether it's premium uh, a basic a standard premium or or that um or if it's based off weight so like if you have an item that costs a lot to ship then you can name it based on that um like class one for anything under two kilogram class two anything under three kilogram so for my items i usually have um, this type of shipping option mainly because most of my items are of the same weight class so it's under a kilo or under two kilos so i just do this shipping class so um we can you guys can ask me how to set up the shipping class in the future um, by email if you need more information about this for the link product so it's nice because if you're listing a dress again if you have other items that's relevant to that particular item you can uh, upsell them or you can cross sell them so you just type in another item title here like whatever items you want to include as a relevant item to these what you are listing and then right here is the attribute remember that we created this attribute for sizes and colors and all that this is the time that you can use it so for this item uh, it's a multicolor and I only have one multicolor of it uh, I'm just gonna do variation for sizes for example and here I would create variation for select also extra small to large I have available and then I'll just save that variation now you can do multiple um, attributes here you can also add color attributes if you like or you can do length attribute with the, co the size attribute and you basically just add the same variation I don't need it so I'm just gonna delete this so i'll remove the length because it is only one style exactly that is the only variation i have are sizes so i'll just save that and the most important part of this one right here is the variation so for you to create for this item to display with a specific sizing you have to create variation from all the attributes which are the attributes obviously are sizes um, extra small small medium and large so then you create it here and now the final thing you have to do is to fill out the items for each it's pretty simple all you need to do is go create an sq if you want it if you want to manage the items uh quantity so if you have five of the large of this item 
the five there how much are you selling it for $79.95 and then do you allow back orders or not um, leave the shipping cost if you want to set up a shipping cost you put it in here uh, tax class whatever you put it in there if you don't put uh, if you manage to stack and you don't put a number here, it means zero. It's not going to show up. If you don't add a price as well, it's not going to show up. So if you don't fill out the rest of these items and you only fill out large with this information, um, if I go to... It's not going to show up in your um, yeah. So now it shows um, our post, and when you buy them, you can only see large. Now, if I would go and add the attributes for. Medium three, um, and then I put update. And then right now I have the medium and the large items, and it automatically shows how many I on stock now the most if you're um, a store as well if you're able to sell online and offline the the stack management may not be a good idea to add in there but it's also good it really depends on how you do your business process so that's up to you if you are going to be managing your stock inventory uh, automatically or if you will manually do that and next is to set up our menus so that it shows like it shows like this like it's organized so let's go ahead and do that um, I'm gonna go back to my appearance and create the menu so that my store product category would be included so I would go and add this to the main menu but what we want to do is make sure that we're putting this as a subcategory on the shop so I would add this shop um, and then put this the shop should be uh, a main menu right below and then I'll put my clothing here my gown here and then gown would be under uh, gala would be under gown, dress would be under clothing, pageant would be under here, and then prom would be under there, swimwear would be under my shop, one piece, two piece, services would be under here and then I'll save the menu so now the main menu is our primary so when we go here now we have a store right so when you click you'll see all these options so when you go here you click on dress now you see the dress that i just created 
there's a lot of other things that you need to be doing here to make it look up, um, really nice. <laughs> um, I would have to, I definitely would have to make some changes here because this looks pretty crazy right now. Is remove this information here because like no one really wants to see all these. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my pages and I'll go to my home. And I'll just like remove this one. And then I'll click home. Now it's not there anymore. What I want my home to display is the photo that I was putting supposed to be in the header. Uh, I want to use. You can put other things here obviously if you want the so you want that one there it's home and if you want to add other things like let's see you want to add two sets of information here one would be to add your let's see um, you can put like best selling products and then in here you can add like maybe you can add filter so filter by price filter by attributes and then done so now when i go to my home page so i can do a filter right here well we don't have a lot of items so it's still not showing so there are a lot of things that you can do here of course our website kind of look whacked right now um, these things here is in the widget so i'll go over there real quickly to show you how to remove that um, appearance widget So let's remove the sidebar. This we don't really need. So I um, want this out. So just off, remove, remove, remove. Uh, maybe I'll put the filter here instead. Color. Filter by. Yeah, let's do that. And then maybe I'll add another. Maybe I'll add a cart in here. And then let's see what we have so far. Then I have the cards on the side, filter by size, or if you want to add additional filter by color yeah so 
our website still looks pretty wacky right now but let's um, we can do a lot more changes here which I will not cover for now because we only have one and a half hour for this tutorial but I hope you guys um, learn anything with these um, I want to go back to the home page and remove what I just added in there just so it doesn't look too wacky I'm gonna remove these one I'm gonna remove this one so that one okay so if I go to my home page it will show you so this is too much information right let's go ahead and edit these first I'll go back to my products and then I will edit this. Oh, because why did I do that? That doesn't make sense. Um, I think that's. Then you go there. Okay. Now it's time to test our store to make sure that we can actually ship and buy things. So I want to click here. And then choose my option medium and then I'll click and it has the the reviews will show here additional information the description of your items and then I'll click add to cart and once you add this to cart it will show up here and then you can proceed to check out and fill out your information directly here and then click a payment option if it's cash delivery check direct bank transfer um, the reason why your stripe or your paypal is not showing there is because it's not set up yet now if you guys need uh, help specifically on your how to connect your PayPal how to set up your stripe in here I can definitely help you with that that's about it for our basic WordPress tutorial with WooCommerce I know that this the design is not that great but um, this design you just spend a little bit more time on your appearance because this is where you can make the changes there change the colors the photos change the theme be careful when you're changing your theme in WooCommerce because some of them might not be updated or available and you might see like errors when you're updating it make sure that you have enough storage on your web hosting so to do any updates to add additional plugin and all that so if you have additional questions Feel free to reach out to us by email. It was hosted and brought to you by datatrendsco.com. Build better IT for your business. We offer domain, web hosting, web design, email solution, and technical support. If you'd like us to build your website, these are the costs and options. So we offer end-to-end -end professional website design services for business, e-commerce, grocery or food business portal or directory website visit us at www.petatrendsgo.com